No. Don't go anywhere. All right, just relax. Okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. All right, man. Take the backpack off. We, we finna go to jail. Don't resist me, dude. What is it? Cops have a duty to protect citizens and make them feel safe in their presence. But what happens when they overstep their bounds and mistreat teenagers? Here are instances where cops attacked innocent teens and it backfired. This situation started during a gym class at East Ridge High School when student Taurus Sledge refused to join a kickball gang saying he wasn't feeling well. However, during free time, Taurus later began playing basketball instead. This led to a confrontation with the gym coach who felt disrespected when Taurus called him a racist and some other names. The coach, upset by the situation, reached out to the school cop, Tyler McRae, for help. When Officer Tyler arrived, he found Taurus loudly and aggressively arguing with the coach in front of the other students and staff. Piss me off. We're playing kickball game, we wouldn't play. So as soon as the basketball's come out, he comes out here and wants to play basketball. So I come up to him, I'm like, Tar, you said you were sick. He said, don't, don't approach me like that. I said, I'm a teacher. I can approach you how I want to. I'm like, I didn't do this respectfully. I just asked him a question. And then I, I, I try to go over here. He goes over here, and I try to walk him outside to get him one-on-one. -on -one. And he's got the basketball, and it comes to me, and I grab the basketball, and then he sort of bucks on me and comes at me into my face. And he won't talk to me. And he says, you're a racist motherfucker, and I'll kick your fucking ass. Quote. You can ask Katie. I ain't, I ain't part of that shit. But I want to have a conversation in front of you with him. Because he got to know if he was wrong and I'm talking to him. I just got to switch to this class because the administrators, my counselor, whoever came hire a teacher for my institute. After the coach shared his side of the story, it was Forrest's turn to explain what had happened. Officer Tyler listened to him, and it was pretty clear that the cop didn't even need to get involved. Torres simply didn't feel well enough to do intense exercises like the coach wanted, but that didn't mean he couldn't do something lighter like playing basketball. The coach, however, saw things differently. It was obvious he got annoyed because Torres didn't follow his orders and it seemed to hurt his ego. Sure, teachers are there to make sure students follow instructions, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't be understanding. After all, being flexible and understanding should also be a part of the job. My institute, I've been taking all four years. Mr. Blaylock, I've been taking four years. They can't hire another teacher, keep a teacher in that class. So with that being said, my institute, my guidance counselor put me in here. Not knowing, that I told him I wasn't feeling good, came to, came to him about that. That was today. already done, done and on about, yes. Done and on about, he left alone. Okay, cool, we cool. I'm up there in the bleachers sitting down. Finally, when I come, come down from off the bleachers, he wanna come at me aggressively. What happened to you? You supposed to be in the bleachers. Like, that's not how you talk to me. You could be a good citizen, but be aware. When you talking to me, it's respect. So what happened after that? After that, it wasn't, it wasn't nothing else to discuss. I walked off and continued on what I was doing. I'm not finna talk to a good old citizen. You could have your little, you know, you feel me? That's not gonna resolve nothing. If I'm not doing nothing, if I'm minding my own business, don't come to me no type of way. And how you bumped up against hey, me like that? We're talking about you bumped up against hey, me like that? As a teacher, you didn't play as a like teacher or that game. I told you, you be, I wasn't feeling we, good. We, that we, was the end of right, we been quiet for a while. I'm minding my own business. I walked out. Can okay. I work? Okay, I organized game. You didn't play. I asked you why you didn't play. However, the coach couldn't stand Torres explaining his side of the story to Officer Tyler. He interrupted their conversation, quickly shifting the focus back to himself. The coach started arguing with Torres, insisting that he should have listened to him simply because he was the teacher. But it seemed like the coach was pretty proud of his position. Honestly, even though both sides had their points, the situation definitely didn't need a cop involved. In the worst case, the coach should have just given Torres a punishment or handled it in another way. Well, you didn't feel well. I didn't, I didn't buck on your name. I said, okay, it's fine. Next thing you know, the basketball's come out and now you're on the floor. So 
so I came up to you and I was like, I thought you were sick when we were playing kickball, and now you're not sick anymore. And that's when you, you went from here to like that. And you shut it down, and I couldn't talk to you. And that's where we are. I asked you a question. I said, I thought you were sick when we were playing kickball. And then you went, and you changed it twofold. Like I was coming at you. And then you said, don't come at me like that. I was like, I'm asking you a question. I'm not coming at you. If I came at you, you'd know it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm 50 years old. I'm too old for that stuff, okay? I've been, I've been doing this for 26 freaking years. All right? I've got a little bit of experience. So if you think I'm coming at you, you're totally wrong, 100%. But as a teacher and as a person of, of respect, that I do respect these kids, you ask any kids in here. If you call me racist, I'm the most least racist person in the school. You ask anybody around here. Black, white, or indifferent. Kids, young kids, adults. I guarantee you, I treat this man, this man, this man with the same respect that they treat me. Don't call me racist. As a teacher, you're my student. I asked you a question, and you could not answer it. You got really upset. That's where we're at. That's, you know. That's exactly what I did from the moment I came in this okay. class. You had something on me when I asked if you could open up the door. What, what Your door? question was regarding to why, why this, why that. And I gave you a simple question in return, but you wanted to go further with the um, with the. Torres tried to listen to what his teacher had to say, but as soon as he started to respond, the teacher cut him off right away. It seemed like the teacher didn't want Torres to share his side and just used his authority to keep Torres quiet. Torres managed to start over, explaining again he wasn't feeling well, and that's why he didn't want to do the kickball game, but the teacher insisted he didn't know that, even though Torres had told him earlier. Maybe if the teacher had taken the time to listen a little better, he might have understood where Torres was coming from. Now, the only question I asked you was, the only question I asked you was, why could you not play our game? I'm not going to talk to you. I'll let you talk. I'll let you say what you had to say, what you said over there. Supposedly, that's not what you said. You came to me aggressively, and I said, I'm talking in a calm voice. You still had your voice raised while I'm telling you, trying to explain to you why I came down from the bleachers. But you still had your voice up. See, this is why my voice gonna stay this tall because I'm gonna show you how you was doing me right there. I would keep my that. tone like this. I would do I asked you a question. I'm like, why are you not sitting down when you were sitting It don't girl? matter. That I matter. gave you your I'm answer. Argue. I'm not arguing. And you still kept coming at me aggressive. And I let it go and I walked off, minding my own business as I was doing. And then I walked up there on the bleachers and sat down. The reason why you asked me, why was I on the bleachers to begin with, right? Minding my own business once again. So why are you coming at me aggressive? Okay, that's my question. I'm a PE teacher. Why? You would, you, why? Okay, you ask me a question, I'm gonna answer. I'm a PE teacher. Our two classes are playing a kickball game against each other. Coach Murley versus Coach Mauser. I look up and you're in the bleachers. That don't got nothing to do with me feeling sick. I didn't know you were sick at that time. That's why I asked you the question. I'm like, why are you in the bleachers? How many times I got to tell you? Okay, okay. okay. I think the thing is, is you were sick. But then when he allowed you guys to have free time, and then you decided you right. wanted, wanted to play. Not that I decided, but at the time when I was up feeling myself, I'm going to come down. However, Officer Tyler and his fellow cop immediately took the teacher's side, simply because he was the teacher. Their main argument against Taurus was that since the teacher created the exercise, all students had to participate, no questions asked. But they made it sound like the students were in a boot camp instead of school, where they're supposed to be learning and having some fun. The cops, just like teachers, seemed more focused on enforcing authority and power, and Taurus ended up being an easy target in all this. And I'm going to interact. Is that a problem? Yeah, but if he was designed a lesson, he did participate in his lesson. He designed a lesson. A lesson is not to go out there and play with students just because that is, This is a physical to... education class. That is yeah, what the lesson is. Yeah, it is. I get that. So and I came down. The lesson, I came so down on my you, time when I was putting myself and I went down there. So how is that a problem? The problem is our, our kickball game we were playing against Coach Mavis. That's not the just, point. It's not yeah. about the kickball game. It's about me not feeling myself. I, I didn't How many say, times I gotta say that? I didn't say a word to you about not playing. Did I say anything? I was like, that's fine. You came to me after I, after I came down on the bleachers. That's my whole point. You keep talking about the game. You understand the why I asked the question? We're doing a kickball game. You keep talking about the game. That's you the don't whole play. point. You know, we had free time in basketball. That's when you did it. And I asked you a question. So why are you feeling better now than when you wasn't earlier? It was too much. And I think that's a legitimate question. I, it doesn't matter if I'm up matter. there on the bleachers and I'm just now, I'm telling you, I was okay. feeling myself. It's the reason why I came down from off the bleachers. It don't matter about no basketball. It don't matter about no 
no kickball. It ain't. It don't got nothing to do with none of that. I said I was feeling sick. If I'm feeling sick, I'm going to be up there on the bleachers. Where did you not understanding that? When I'm feeling myself, I'm going to come down. Where did you not understanding that? Lower your voice. Lower your voice. I'm just losing myself. Anything else you want to cuff him with? I don't if want you to. If you want to talk to anybody, I, I, I got a lawyer. Torres felt like the whole situation was unfair, so he decided to sit on the bleachers and wait until class was over. Officer Tyler tried to explain and calm things down by putting a hand on Torres' shoulder and telling him to relax, but Torres didn't appreciate the cop touching him. Now, I'm not saying Torres handled everything perfectly, but you'd think the cops, and especially the teacher, would understand how emotional and unpredictable 18-year-olds can be, especially during puberty. Torres eventually decided to walk out, and that's when Officer Tyler escalated things. He started following Torres, even going as far as to threaten him with prison. Anything, but you're not finna come in no type of way and disrespect me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Girl, get your hold hands on. off me. Hold on. Get your hands off me. I said, hold on. You got five seconds to get your what hands off me. What the fuck are you going to do? You got five seconds what, what to get you your hands do? on me. What you going to do? You got five seconds you got, to get your hands off me. I ain't going to do doing nothing. You going to exactly. get your ass off, up off of me and get out of my presence like you got some sense. Be I, a good citizen like you is. How about you be a good citizen not raise your voice? With that badge on your hook. And causing a big scene inside the gym. No, I ain't because causing you really a pushing for disorderly conduct. I ain't pushing that. You if are. I'm pushing some, all right. Like I said. Stay right Okay. This is fine. No. Come on, man, get your stuff. Let's go. I ain't going over. Yeah, you are. Yes, you are. Why is you following me? Because even Mr. Perry wants you to get your stuff because he wants you to meet him over there. So let's go. I don't care about what Mr. Perry said. I'm in this class. I just got in this class. Okay, let's go. What you say to me, dog? Let's go. Get Come the on. fuck out my face. Come on, man. You get finna take a ride to jail, face. dude. I ain't fucking with you. Who the fuck is you talking about riding the jail? I ain't do shit to begin with. It's called disorderly conduct. Disorderly conduct. You ain't and let's go. Officer Tyler even made the mistake of admitting to Taurus that they were upset because he had embarrassed them in front of everyone. So it wasn't Taurus's bad behavior that they were mad about, it was the fact that he had made them look bad in front of the students. Taurus felt like he hadn't done anything wrong and didn't see why he should listen to the cop telling him to stand up so they could arrest him. He felt he didn't deserve to go to jail over this, he was right. But for Officer Tyler, this was the final straw. He started acting aggressively towards Taurus, even though it wasn't necessary. That's cool. Get up off the board. Keep recording. I'm I hope you got to. everything I said in there, too. So let's go. Come with me. Stand up and come with me. Stand up and come with me. I'm telling you to stand up and come with me for causing a disorder inside the gym in front of everybody else. You don't need to be in here. Mr. Perry's telling you to come out. I'm telling you to come on, so you need to get up and come on. I'm giving you a lawful order to get up and come on now. All right, man, take the backpack off. We, we finna go to the gym. Don't resist me, dude. What is it? Don't resist me. Don't do it. I got you. I can't out of here. Okay. Officer Tyler was determined to restore his bruised ego no matter what it took. He ordered Torres to take off his backpack right away, threatening to arrest him if he didn't comply immediately. But Torres was just an 18-year-old boy who wanted to call his dad for support and didn't want to go through this alone. When Torres started dialing his father, Officer Tyler got even angrier because Torres still hadn't taken off his backpack and was making the call. You could hear the frustration in the cop's voice as he struggled to control his temper. Take the bag off. Take the bag off. Are you going to put the bags back on like the camera you should have been? Take the Why bag Why are you off. still holding me, man? Because you're not listening to a lawful order that I'm giving you. Take, Take the, the bag, bag off. off. You still, still holding me. Thank you. Why is y'all still on me at this parents? Why my parents didn't be called? Cause, cause you put, still my on on put my dad on the phone. Put my dad on the phone.
Take the bag off. Why are you trying to get me to retain my stuff off of me? This is my this is my property. This is me. I'm not trying to steal it. I'm trying I to I don't care. You just, just detain you in handcuffs. You just threw me around. Because you didn't listen. I told you to get up. I, I didn't you have to get no up. right to be treated the way you treated me. Why are you still I'm holding you. me? I've been told you to give me a second. You keep back. Do you not, do you not understand that when I say give time, me a second, that means move, remove every yourself away from me. Time, remove you, yourself away from me. Every time remove I give you a second, away, you don't take yourself back away from me. I will let you go if you will take will this you bag off. Remove yourself away from me. I will let you go if you take this bag off. Will you remove yourself away from me? I just told you what I would do. Take the bag off. Take it off. Take the bag off. Come on, take the bag off. Take the bag off, dude. Take it off. You're going to jail for disorderly conduct resisting at this point. Take the bag off. After Officer Tyler grabbed Torres by the hair and dragged him, then yanked at his backpack, he did something that might surprise you. When Torres refused to take off his backpack and didn't comply with being handcuffed, Officer Tyler decided to pepper spray him to take control of the situation. Torres was shocked and disoriented, probably not expecting that a refusal to join in an exercise would lead to such a drastic reaction. Meanwhile, Officer Tyler, convinced he was in the right, told Torres while he was on the ground that nothing had happened. Take the bag off. You're refusing a lawful order for me to be able to put you in handcuffs. Take the bag off. Take the bag off. Take it off. Take the bag off. Take it off. Take the bag off. Take the bag off. I'm going to take the bag off. We can get you decontaminated once the backpack is off. Take the bag off. Take it off. I know it sucks. If you would have just listened, this, couldn't have, this wouldn't have happened. That's all. That's all you had to do was listen. You're still going to resist. You want it some more, dude. Because I... I that's fine, I got a whole can. Take the bag off, man. That's all you have to do is take the bag off. Take the bag off. Why is you harassing me? I told you to take the bag off. Why is you me? I got you on camera. That's fine, dude. Take the bag off. Take it off. I can't breathe. If you take the bag off, we'll get you decontaminated. That's all it is. Torres was lying on the ground after Officer Tyler knocked him down, clearly in pain. He was crying, saying he couldn't breathe, but Officer Tyler didn't seem to care at all. His main focus was on handcuffing Torres, and it didn't even cross his mind to offer any medical help. Officer Tyler struggled to turn Torres around to remove his backpack and finally put the handcuffs on. It was like he was treating Torres as if he was a dangerous criminal rather than just an 18-year-old who was stubborn and overwhelmed at the moment. Hey, breathe! <laughs> I can't breathe. Okay. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Take, give me your hand, man. This is brain. Close it, man. Give me a nurse up here. It's closing by a wind Give me a nurse up here. Roll over, man. Roll over. Roll over. Roll over. Roll over and sit up. Roll over and sit up. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Roll over and sit up, dude. Daddy, Roll over. Roll over and sit up, dude. Okay, 
Thank God in my valve, I just ate three empty <laughs> Roll over and sit up. Roll over and sit up. Roll over and sit up. Dude, I'm trying to help you. Not long after, two nurses arrived to help Taurus because his eyes were burning and he was having trouble breathing. They were very kind and told him they needed to take him to the bathroom to wash his eyes first. But if he thought the situation would wrap up quickly, you'd be mistaken. Officer Tyler was insisting that Taurus had to let go of his backpack. It seemed like the only one who needed to let go was Officer Tyler himself. His insistence was just delaying the help that Taurus desperately needed. Let go of the bag, dude. <laughs> We got a nurse here to help you we got with the spray. Flushed, okay? So can okay. we get you into the bathroom and get you to start flushing your eyes out? Because that's the only yeah. thing that's going to help that spray, okay? Yeah. 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 Yes. I can't breathe. He is sitting up. I'm going to catch him on my breath. Come on, man. I'm good. Give, I'm just trying to. Give me your hand. I'm good. I'm trying to. Let go of the backpack. I'm trying to. Let go of the backpack. I'm trying to. So he can help you. I'm trying to catch up on my bro. I got you. Yeah. The more you're struggling against him, the harder it is for you to catch up. Just the let go of the bag. This should be over a lot quicker. That's what we all want. Just let go of the bag. You keep the spray with me and I tell him I can't breathe. Just let go of the bag. Just let go of the bag. Just let go of the bag. This is my so we stuff. Can, I don't want to. We're not it taking your stuff. It ain't about my stuff. It's not about you taking it. That's not the point. You keep wrestling with me. Not because you're me. not listening. You're resisting me. At one point, Officer Tyler even started yelling at Taurus to stop resisting, which didn't make any sense because Taurus wasn't resisting in that moment. He was barely able to breathe. It was confusing why Officer Tyler was making things up that weren't true. Eventually, the cop decided to switch gears and offer Taurus some help, trying to act like the good guy. But by then, Taurus wanted to keep up on his own and didn't want any help from Officer Tyler. So give me the stuff. I'm give me your hands. I'm if I'm out of my own business. And I kept telling you to let go of me. Stop fighting me. You, dude, chill out and just give me your hand. I'm not doing nothing. I'm literally not even defending myself. I didn't put my hands on you. I'm not doing anything. I literally stayed content. I stayed calm. I kept my mouth closed at some point. It is not no right for you to slam, slam me against the bleachers. Even though Officer Tyler and the medical staff were now offering Taurus help, it was too late. Taurus didn't trust them and felt threatened, which makes sense. After all, a cop shouldn't be pepper spraying an 18-year-old's eyes just because they felt like their ego was hurt. Soon, more cops arrived as backup, and it seems like Officer Tyler realized he might have messed up. He quickly started justifying his actions, explaining how he actually did the right thing. Let's see what he had to say. I'm clear. I gave you multiple, multiple times to to take the backpack off, to put your hands behind your back. I, I gave you multiple chances. You didn't give me a chance if you literally hugged me with your hands on me. You was not making me feel any This kid and one of the teachers down here jawing back and forth and stuff like that. He got to raising his voice, disrupting an entire gym full of people that's even playing basketball. He goes to walk away. I did this. It's like, hey, hold up this second, man. And he looks at me and says, you got five seconds to take your hands off me. I was like, okay. Follow him over here because at this point, he's he's, hooked. he's mine. He sits down on the bleacher. I tell him, get up, man. You know, you got to go with me. Mr. Perry, once you get up and get your stuff, you got to go with me. No, nah, screw you. I'm not doing that. So I go grab his arm and the fight begins. And while we're up here, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing to the ground. I'm trying to get his backpack off of him. I give him a chance to take it off himself and everything else. I kept telling him, take your backpack off, put your hands behind your back, back, you know, back and forth, same thing. He wouldn't, so I sprayed him to see if he would listen to pain compliance. Still yet, he is still, he is still not 
complying. That looks like dad's right here at the door. Doris's father rushed to the school as soon as he saw the shocking news that his son was about to be arrested. When he arrived and saw what was happening, Officer Tyler was quick to step in and be the first to talk to him. The cop gave a brief explanation of what had happened while Torres was still sitting in the floor in pain. However, Officer Tyler quickly turned the situation around, making himself out to be the victim. He claimed he felt threatened because Torres wouldn't follow his orders. It didn't really add up. How could a grown armed cop feel threatened by a teenager who was just acting out because of puberty? For now. Are you his dad, sir? Yeah. I'm sorry. Can I speak to you out here, please? Alright. Deputy McCray, I'm going to start here at the high school. So the situation is your son and a coach are mad at each other for whatever reason. I'm just there to be seen and try to keep the peace for whatever reason. Well, your son starts getting more agitated and more agitated, raising his voice, disrupting the entire gym. At this point, that's disorderly conduct, but I'm, I'm not really wanting to do anything with it at this point. But he goes to walk away, and one of my things that I try to do here with all the kids is try to pull them to the side after they've had a confrontation with a teacher and go, let me holler at you real quick. Let me talk to you. Try to squash whatever this is that you got going on. So as he walks away, I put my hand on his shoulder and say, hey, man, come here. We'll talk to you for a second. He squares off with me and says, you got five seconds to get your hands off me. I was like, really? Like at that point, now I'm feeling threatened because you're squaring up on me. Well, why are you doing this? As he's walking away, I was like, look, dude, come here. I need to talk to you. You're causing a huge scene. You're yelling. You're causing disruption in the entire gym. He goes and sit down with the bleachers. I said, look, even Mr. Perry wants you to get your stuff. You at least got to go to in-school suspension or whatever he wants to do with you for now. I said, but get your stuff. Come on, get up, go. But he keeps, no, yelling. I was interrupted. like, all right, man. It's over. You, you got to take a ride this sort of this He calls this big scene. I'm okay. You can open it. Um, at this point, you got to ride with me. He calls this big freaking scene. Of course, Officer Tyler had to report that he had pepper sprayed Taurus, and the way he handled it might surprise you. Not only did he refuse to apologize for his overreaction, he also tried to paint himself as a hero. He claimed that between the two options, he chose to use pepper spray instead of a taser on Taurus because he thought it would be too harsh for a kid. But seriously, how is pepper spray any better? Everything else. So I grabbed Bob's arm to go to stand him up, and he starts fighting me. So I'm using everything I can to not tumble down the bleachers with him. Do I grab his hair? Yeah, I do. Because I'm, I'm just I'm grabbing for whatever I can to try to get a hold of him to try and detain him and get him in handcuffs as peacefully as I can. But he's not wanting me to do that. And then I'm trying to take the backpack off of it. I tell him, hey man, take the backpack. I'm not trying to steal your stuff. It's going to go with you. But I, to, in order for me to detain you without any further incidents, I need you to take the backpack off. And I let him go. I let him try to do it himself. He doesn't want to, so I grab it again. Try to help him get it off. And it's back and forth, back and forth. I keep giving him verbal commands. I'm giving you a lawful order. Take the backpack off. I got to detain you. So on and so forth. Go does and listen. So, per my policy, if people are still not listening, even after I've already tried soft and hard hand control, I, my next step is to go to some form of, you know, baton, taser, pepper spray. I don't want to tase the kid. I don't want, I'm not trying to hit him with a baton. So I use the most compliant force I can, which is the pepper spray, which usually helps kind of lighten that mood and then go, oh shit, that hurts. All right, fuck this, I'm done. So I didn't want to put electricity to the kid's body. He's just a kid. I didn't want to have to use this damn thing. So I, I, that's why I use a pepper spray. And he's still, I'm like, trying to get him to take his backpack off so I can get him cuffed up and we can take him go get him decontaminated. He's still not listening to me. Still resistant. Still trying to keep the backpack on. Still don't want to stand up. I'm like, dude, like at what, at, at what point are you going to listen to me so we can get this over with? Officer Tyler gathered other witnesses, including teachers and fellow cops, in front of the school to explain why Taurus was pepper sprayed. Every time they tried to justify it, you could see they were starting to realize how ridiculous it all sounded and probably felt a bit embarrassed. Taurus's father remained very professional throughout the whole ordeal. Even though he clearly disagreed with the cops, he stayed calm. He asked for the school's security footage and the footage from the cops' body cameras, clearly wanting to gather evidence against them. After getting all the details, it was finally time for him to check on his son and help him wash his eyes from the pepper spray. Um, the last incident that happened, it never showed up in court or anything. What was the last incident? Uh, some incident was good. I think I recall what you're talking about from last year. Yeah. I have no, I, I wasn't there so early last year. I have no clue what that incident's about. Yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's cameras and everything. I definitely like to get a hold of it. If we 
said I could go take shares off it. Yeah, yeah. so, so the, out, you know. the body cam, whenever I dock it tonight, it'll download and the sheriff's office will be able to get a hold of it tomorrow. So probably would be ready for you or a lawyer or whatever to be able to retain by at least Thursday. Okay. So, okay. Sounds good. All right, so at this point, Tara is in he's, the he's, He has to go with me at this point. He's going to have to take a ride at juvenile, or yeah, juvenile. Um, but he, hours. It, probably just a couple hours. Just enough to get him booked in, get him a bond. If they do that there, I'm not real sure. And then you guys will come and take him up. Um, but I need to get him decontaminated from the spray. But he's not going to listen to me. He's not going to stand up. He's not going to take the backpack off. He's not wanting to do anything that I'm trying to ask him to do. To contamination, you know, wash his eyes out. Yeah, wash his eyes out from the purpose spray. Right. Can I talk to him? Absolutely. Right if, if, if you think it was sitting right here. Dad, do you want to talk to him first and see what you can do? If you don't mind, can I just have Dad talk to him first real quick? Thank you. When Doris's father reached him, Doris was still on the floor. and You could see he felt a lot better just having his dad there. His father calmly explained that they needed to wash his eyes. Doris got up, took off his backpack, and went with his father to the bathroom. Throughout this, he remained silent and looked pretty shaken, as though he could never have stopped imagining that an ordinary school day would turn into such a nightmare. The cops followed them to the bathroom the entire time, not giving them any privacy. It was clear they didn't think Taurus or his father would try to run away, so their constant presence seemed a bit unnecessary. Is there a bathroom that we can use? Okay. I want your dad to help you walk, man. That way you can not fall down the stairs. While Torres and his father were in the bathroom, a backup cop came in to explain what would happen next. He told them that Torres had to go with the cops no matter what. However, when Torres' father asked for more details, the cops suddenly claimed he didn't know any of the details, whether it was about the teacher, Torres, or Officer Tyler, and that he couldn't comment on anything. So if he didn't know the full story, how could he be so sure that Torres had to go with them? Doris's father understood that whether the arrest was fair or not, the truth would eventually come out, so he stayed calm and didn't take any sides. 
He supported Torres throughout the whole ordeal. When the cops told Torres to turn around so he could be handcuffed, Torres' father gave his permission, and Torres complied without question. Maybe the police should have involved his father from the start. It was clear that Torres was even more upset because he was facing his first arrest ever. Um, at this point, with everything happening, like I told you, you gotta take a ride for me. Okay. So, at this point, man, I need. I'm gonna give him your phone or anything. Yo, go ahead and give him your chain. Yeah, for sure. But I don't want them to leave that down there. Chain your bracelet. What's the you got any Alright. At this one, I need you to put your hands behind your back, man. Hey, he, sh he, should, he, sh he should be able to call you from down there as well and let you know whenever they're ready for him to leave. Like I said, I'm more familiar with, you know, taking a, adults to jail and them getting a bond and all that stuff. As he's far as doing once, once, so. once he gets paperwork done, they're going to take him in there. They're going to process him probably within a couple, two or three hours. Yeah. They'll call you up. Hey, you come pick him up. Okay. After my car? Can do that? Yeah. As long as it'll help keep you calm, yeah, I'm good with that. I'll be calm from the jump. All right, man. You Let's putting see. your hands on me don't make me feel safer than what I, what okay. I feel. I get it. So, turn around. I gotta put you in. After Torres was handcuffed, it was time to go. Torres remained silent and sad, but with his father's supporting encouragement, everything went smoothly. The cops were finally able to take him to the police car. At this point, it wasn't about whether Torres should have acted out towards a teacher. The real question was whether the cops went too far with the situation, especially considering that Officer Tyler had grabbed and pulled Torres' hair several times before using pepper spray. Put your hands together like you're praying, man. Like, like that right there, okay? It's gonna be a little bit more comfortable. I'm only holding on to you, that way you don't fall. Because you can't catch yourself with your hands behind your back. Torres was eventually taken to custody and charged with disorderly conduct, resisting arrest and assault. His attorney, Robin Flores, questioned the legality of the arrest, particularly whether the misdemeanor happened in the officer's presence, which is required by Tennessee law for such an arrest. It's clear that Officer Tyler attacked an innocent teen and it backfired. His actions are now under investigation and the consequences could be serious. I hope he faces real repercussions and possibly even loses his job. What do you think about this? On July 19th in 2017, 14-year-old Connor LaBelle, who has autism, was sitting alone in a park in Phoenix, Arizona. He was using a piece of string to calm himself, which is a common way for people with autism to manage their feelings. Officer David Grossman, who is watching from his patrol car, thought Connor's behavior might be linked to drug use. Clearly, Officer Grossman wasn't well informed about autism and didn't realize what Connor was actually doing. He decided to knock Connor to the ground and arrest him, showing a lack of understanding and sensitivity towards Connor's situation. What's going on? Yeah, what are you doing? What are you doing? What? What is that? Stop walking away from me. 
Okay, so why are you bouncing around all the way? You have any idea on you? No. Don't go anywhere. All right, just relax. Are you okay? Are you okay? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Stay down. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Don't move. Okay. Do you understand? No, I'm okay. I'm a... Help! Stop moving! I am okay! Don't you move, you understand? Yeah. I need help. Don't move. I need help. Don't stop moving. Am I gonna, am I gonna go away? Relax. I'll breathe. You are breathing. Yeah. I'm gonna clap him right down. Officer Grossman acted like Connor was a major criminal as he held him down, making Connor panic and struggle to breathe. Despite being overwhelmed and confused, Connor answered all of Officer Grossman's questions, still not fully grasping what was happening. When Officer Grossman asked why he was behaving the way he was, Connor simply said it was because he was okay. It's heartbreaking to think that Connor, who was just a young boy, didn't understand the situation, and was treated so harshly by the cop. I'm okay. Stop moving. I, am I gonna? Am I gonna? Are you gonna go away? Are you gonna go away? Just relax. What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? Just relax, okay? Yeah. Don't move. You're fine, okay? Don't move. You, you won't leave What's me. your name? Connor. Why are you acting like this, Connor? Because I'm okay. Stop moving. No time is up. Relax. Who's this? Diane. He's fighting with me. What's going on? Do you know him? Okay. Okay. I'm waiting for another unit to show up and then we're going to figure out what's going on, okay? He's fine. He's breathing. He just started. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Okay. No, I was trying to talk to him. I wasn't sure what was going on. And then he started trying to back away from me and then kind of pull away from me when he seemed like he wanted to run away. Connor. Officer Grossman misunderstood the situation so badly that he ended up hurting Connor. You'd be shocked to hear what the little boy went through just because the cop wasn't educated about autism. But more on that later. Soon, Diane Greglo, Connor's caretaker, arrived and told Officer Grossman that Connor was autistic. Even after this, Grossman didn't ease up. Diane explained that Connor was just a 14-year-old boy using the strings to calm himself, but Officer Grossman kept insisting he wasn't sure if it was drug-related. After learning the truth, it would have been simple for Grossman to apologize and leave the situation. That didn't happen. It's okay, babe. He's scared. Yeah, it's okay. You okay? You're okay. You're okay, all right? Sorry, he scared you. I... Because the pro, because the he's doing something with his hands or something it's in his hands. Stemming. Yeah, I don't know what that is. It's when you have autism. It's mm -hmm. his nerves. Okay. Oh my God. That's fine. Ooh. All right. You gonna relax? Yeah. Okay. What's her name? Diane. Okay. It's okay, babes. Oh my God, his hands turning white. Okay. Can you move? Yeah. Stay right there, okay? Don't move, Just stay calm, okay? Yeah. You see the string in his hand? Yeah. That's what he yeah, but I don't know. But I don't know if it was like some type of drug or something, because I couldn't see what he was doing. Because as soon as he was doing it, I don't know. I'm sorry. That's okay. He Come comes on. over here and plays while I'm in the music lesson. Were you playing? Relax. Okay. Yeah. You don't have nothing on you, right? No. Okay. I'm only 14 years old. Tell me I'm slow, you know, please. Okay, relax, okay? Yeah, I'll take a deep breath. Okay. Don't move, Connor, okay? Do me a favor, don't move. <clears throat> so you, you drove by and you saw him skimming and you thought he was on drugs? A, a couple of times, yeah. You don't know anything about autism, huh? No. Sorry. That's okay. I'm not in trouble. No. 
Diane, trying to make Officer Grossman see the mistake, asked him if he knew anything about autism, hoping it would help him understand and let Connor go. Instead, Officer Grossman kept asking if Connor had any weapons. It was clear that Connor, being just a 14-year-old with autism, wasn't carrying any weapons. But that wasn't the end of it. Officer Grossman even started defending his actions by saying he was suspicious because Connor was trying to move away from him. Of course, Connor was scared, and he didn't understand why he was being treated so harshly. All right, he, he, he has doesn't... autism. Okay. okay. He's 14 years old. So relax, he okay? Won't, he won't scare me. Okay. You're okay. You it's just like you John McCure. Just like John McCure. Police officer like John McCure. Both of you know the one? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all. I just want to make sure he doesn't have nothing on. Why don't you sit up, okay? Sit up. Ah, yeah, that's fine. Sit up. Can you sit up all the way? There you go. Stand on up for me, okay? There you go. You don't have nothing else? Nothing on you? Okay, here, sit next to her right now, okay? Do you have ID okay, with you, ma'am? Yes, I do. It's fine, bitch. Just relax, okay? I'm sorry. All right. I was just in there making a new schedule for Con for Danica's music lesson. Yeah, because I drove by a couple of times, and he seemed fine until he started doing something with his hands, and then... He goes like the... It's called stimming. I'm sorry, you're not... If you knew about autism. It's okay. And then when I was trying to identify him, it seemed like he wanted to run away from me and... Well, because you scared him. Oh my god, you got... What's, what's his first name? Connor? Connor. Many cops don't know how to handle situations properly, and Officer Grossman was a prime example. Instead of simply apologizing to Diane and Connor for the disturbance and mistake, which is the least he could have done, he decided to get confrontational with Diane. Even though Diane had the right to remain anonymous, she gave Officer Grossman her ID to make things easier for Connor. Officer Grossman not only faces risks of being sued for battery, but he also could lose his qualified immunity because he threatened someone's constitutional rights. Okay, what's his date of birth? Officer Grossman also called for backup to handle the situation, which seemed pretty unnecessary. When the other officers arrived, Officer Grossman admitted that he had made a mistake. Just when it seemed like he might apologize and try to make things right, Officer Grossman went the other way. Instead of just saying sorry, he started arguing with his colleagues, trying to convince him that his actions were reasonable. Hey, Diane, here's your ID. Just give me a few more minutes, okay? Have you dealt with them before? Okay. What? I'm so wrong. Break you in half. Huh? Break you in half. So he has autism. So I drove by a few times and he seemed fine. And then he was doing something in his hand and like smelling it. And as soon as he was smelling it, it was like he was having like a miniature seizure while he was standing up. <laughs> so it was this string that the aunt was telling me about. So when I when I went to approach him, yeah, it was a string. I, I guess he has autism, so the string, I don't know if it calms him down or whatever. What's going on? Because he started backing away from me when I was trying to identify him and try to figure out what's in his hand, and he slightly turned to try and take off. Then I went to grab him, and I had hands behind his back so I could detain him and figure out what's going on. 
Officer Grossman tried everything he could do to cover up his mistake and make himself look better. He even started making up details, like claiming the boy was sniffing the wire he had used to calm himself down, which made Grossman think he was on drugs. Grossman hoped that by adding these extra details, one of his colleagues might step in and back him up. Let's see what other excuses Officer Grossman came up with. And as his hands were behind his back, then he started pulling away from me and trying to... So I never let go of him until we twirled around by the tree and he went down on the ground. I just held him there. I heard my radio go off, so I figured at least uh, if the radio went off, I knew someone was going to come, so... Service 1491 in the blind, negative 1029, 11 of 2017, on a 2005 Chevy pickup out of Avondale, 1547. Hey. Hey, where are you at? Okay, well, I have work here, so I wasn't sure if uh, you wanted me to talk to work or wait till you get here. 1067, negative contact. Okay. So, bye bye. Lane, almost all road. All right. So, I drove by a couple of times, right? So, I see him pacing from the bench to the corner, and he has something in his hand. Now, we figure out it's a string, the string, the black thing he has in his yeah. hand. I guess that's the same. He's like, <laughs> So, when I was watching, he seemed fine, and then he would hit it on his hand and smell it like he's trying to get whatever air from it. And as soon as he does that, he just, like, you know, just goes in like a brief per hours. Officer Grossman spent a lot of his time justifying his actions. He went around to each one of his colleagues, telling him his side of his story with a few new twists each time. It was almost as if he was trying to convince himself of a truth that wasn't even there. Each time he retold the story, he added more details to make Connor look bad while leaving out the aggressive actions he took. In the end, it's hard to understand what he's trying to cover up, especially since his body cam footage could prove otherwise started trying to inhale whatever he was inhaling and I was saying hey what's going on what are you doing he's like nothing and then he said something about stimming so I'm like well what is that I'm not you know I don't know if it's a drug thing a medical thing I don't know what he meant by that and then I asked him well what's your name and he starts backing up I'm like hey don't back up don't back up for me you know I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here he starts backing up some more I went to uh, grab his hand and uh so I'm like, hey, just relax, just calm down. So I, when I went to detain him, put his hands behind his back, and as I start pulling out the handcuffs, he starts pulling away from me. So as soon as he starts pulling away from me, I still have a hold on him. So we're twirled around by the tree, and then we uh, fell on the ground, and then I kind of fell on top of him, and I just held him there because I knew I heard my radio chip off. So I figured someone was coming, so I just held him there. You know what the worst part of the whole situation is? Officer Grossman never even bothered to apologize. Instead, Diane ended up apologizing, saying Connor was a good kid, even though neither she nor Connor had done anything wrong. Officer Grossman even tried to claim that he just wanted to make sure Connor was okay, which is pretty ironic considering he was the one who ended up hurting him. You get along with them? Um, or do they irritate you? <laughs> no, no, they get along. Okay. No, my sister's irritate. My, bro my daughter's irritate my boy, so I get it. Okay, perfect. Sisters are made to irritate brothers. Yeah. <laughs> he is such a good boy. Seriously, that's why I was just like, I'm so sorry. No, no, I don't know what's nice going on. We were yelling, so. Oh, okay. Well, when we started falling on the ground, that's when I started yelling. Uh, but I just want to make sure that he was okay because, like I said, that string, I'm not familiar with it. So he seemed perfectly fine, but every time like he would hit his hand with it, right. and then he would go like this, almost like he was trying to smell something. We have problems with some kids you know, smelling, uh, inhaling, things like that, almost like gasoline, stuff like that. So I wasn't sure if that's what was going on. He likes his string. We go through a couple hundred of those strings. And there are, sometimes it's our shoelaces, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, stand up, babe. You're okay. Stand up. Bye. All right, see you, Connor. Thank see you, Connor. Take care, okay? Yeah. See me around. Make sure you say hi, okay? Yeah, just say hi. It's Jeff, right? Yeah. It's Jeff. Alright. Uh, okay, let me just uh, talk to my so, boss real quick. Uh, I live right on Jack Rabbit Trail. Okay. So, but we're here for the music because we go there. Oh, okay. And then we'll go to the park over. Yeah. The you want to check with him real quick, school. see if he needed them to so stay up there? We're here all the time. That's why it's just like, I'm just so blown What school is he going to? Oh, he's going to go Millennium. 
Diane was truly a kind woman who even reached out to Officer Grossman trying to smooth things over despite everything. She told him she held no hard feelings, even though he hadn't offered the simplest apology. Instead, Officer Grossman told Connor that the next time he saw him, he should just say hi. Unsurprisingly, someone with such a big ego couldn't see the need to apologize properly. Diane was ready to leave with Connor, but Officer Grossman insisted they wait until he spoke with his boss. Given how clear the situation was, it's unclear what he needed to discuss. Nonetheless, Diane, never the gracious person, tried to make the best out of a bad situation. John was always mentioning that the officers Oh, yeah, school. we have two different officers. I told him, if there's any problems, you go to those guys and talk to them, because they'll help you out. So. All right, well, no hard feelings. Yeah, no, 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 I tried fine. to be calm. I saw no, you on no, him, and okay. I was just like, okay. Well, I wasn't hurting him. I was just trying to hold him until I had another person come. That's all. Right. But just think that I'm just, I'm just making sure you my boss is good. panicked, so you had me panicked. No. You had that look on your face like you weren't sure what the Thank heck you. was going on. Thanks, Jeff. All right. And I'll look forward because I want, I'd love to get one of those for Connor. Down, I'll give you a call. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Right. But yeah, no, you just, you had this look like, what the heck is going on here? No, no, no. Fine. So, and then you chose this because you were checking him too. And I'm like, trust me. It's... Hey, I'm very sorry. No, it's fine, buddy. Yeah. It's okay. Next time you see me, just say hi. Yeah. Just say hi. Yeah. Okay, it's Officer... Grossman. Grossman. Oh, that's a good one. Officer Grossman. Yeah. Yep. All right, well, take care. I'm sorry to cause you all this. No, 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 no. Like I said, just hang tight real quick so my boss... Oh, does. do you need that's something? All. I just want to make sure my boss doesn't need nothing from me at all. Oh, okay. Well, you have my driver's license. <laughs> it's it's <okay>. current. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, I know you Buckeye people know us for my divorce. That's for sure. Not, not me. No, have you been around very long? Yeah, but I don't deal with home issues. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I don't think it's been over a year, so thank God. But my ex, my kids wouldn't go, so he called the police and made them come to force the kids to leave. Okay. <laughs> it's always a bad thing. Connor suffered serious injuries from the incident, including cuts, bruises, and a swollen ankle that needed surgery. He also faced emotional trauma with increased fear and anxiety around police and men in general. Connor's parents, Danielle and Kevin Leibel, took legal action against Officer Grossman in the city of Buckeye, fighting their case through the court system for several years. Eventually, a federal jury in the U.S. District Court in Arizona had to answer three key questions. Did Grossman use excessive force? Did Buckeye violate Connor's rights under the Americans with Disabilities Act? And did Grossman commit unintentional battery under Arizona law? Unfortunately for Connor and his family, the jury ruled no on all three questions. They did not find in favor of Connor on any of the issues. Despite the setback and the situation where a cop attacked an innocent teen with autism, it clearly backfired on Grossman. Connor's parents are determined to seek justice and have sued Officer Grossman again. What do you think about this?